Hey guys, it's Riley. Let's have coffee. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in today. I've got something like fairly important to talk to you about and I'm starting this new category on my channel called Let's Have Coffee. So in the morning when I wake up, I'm gonna have my coffee and just talk to you guys about pretty important stuff. So I really hope you guys like this um, thing that's gonna happen. And yeah, my coffee's really hot. Today's episode of Let's Have Coffee will be entitled The Battle Scars and you're like, what? What is that? I have not planned out this video. I have not thought about what I'm going to say. I really want it to be genuine for you guys. Um, and for it to like just be me talking to you. And I think it's really important that I talk about this. Today, the day I'm recording this, the 5th of August, is my seven months free from self-harm. I did not think I was going to make it to seven months. I did. I have. You guys are going to be watching this tomorrow, so it's on the 6th, but today is the 5th, and I, I made it. I've made it seven months without harming myself in any way. I have also made it much longer since October, I think, since my last suicide attempt, and that's a crazy accomplishment. It's also been, gosh, when was that? since April, since I've been in the hospital, and since I, my meds changed and all of that, I don't know, I'm just feeling a lot better, and this is like a really big accomplishment for me, and I haven't felt awful for a strenuous period of days in a very long time. My new psychiatrist is really great. She has switched around my meds, taken me off some stuff, lowered stuff, like heightened stuff, and they're actually working. And I cannot stress to you guys how important that is. Because, like, you may be taking meds, like antidepressants and things like that, and antipsychotics, but you really, if they're not working, you need to tell whoever's prescribing them to you. Because if they're not working, you need to find the right balance. Mine didn't work for about three years, and I was on stuff, off stuff, changing stuff around, and none of it worked. And the psychiatrist actually, like, listened to me and was like, hey, you need to tell me what's, what's working and what's not, and I did, and they're working now. Basically, this week, I want to talk to you guys about dealing with depression and suicidality. It's something that I've dealt with for a good portion of my life, like, I'm talking, like, elementary school till my junior year and it's insane and it's so difficult and the one thing if you're dealing with stuff like this that I can urge you to do is get help. I know you don't want to. I know the thought of telling someone is scary but you deserve the help. If you're feeling like this you need to seek help, you need to tell somebody because they might be able to help you and make you feel so much better than what you already are. Ultimately, it's up to you. Do you want recovery? Do you want to feel better? And that's something for me, I didn't know how to do it. I was so comfortable enough with my depression and suicidality that I did not know how to live without it. And it was such like a big part of my life where when I tried to recover, I'd be okay for a couple days and then I'd sink back into that hole way deeper than I was before because it's so overwhelmingly difficult. Because you feel like it's become a part of you. You feel like the self-harm has become a part of you, that the depression has become a part of you, and you almost don't know who you are without it. And that's a really difficult thing to admit. I have been hospitalized five times. And don't get me wrong, it sucks. First several times it was not helpful and I think that's honestly because I was not ready to admit that I needed help. And it was just a very difficult situation for me to be in. 
but the last two times I have were in January this year and in April of this year, including a partial in between those two, it was a miracle work. The reason I went back was because I did not get all of the help that I needed out of my two week stay at the first hospital. And I'm urging you now, if you feel suicidal, or if you feel like you are going to harm yourself and there's no way you can stop yourself and there's no way you feel safe, if you have the gut feeling that you are going to do something, please go tell someone, please. And if there's no one you can tell, call 911 because you need somewhere to be where you are monitored and where they're there to help you and a lot of families are not equipped to helping you because they just don't know how to deal with it they don't know what to do but the hospital and the psychiatric unit does and you might think that's weird only crazy people go there and that's not the case the people I've met there have been some of the kindest sweetest people I've ever met in my entire life they just ha all have their own issues and that's something that you need to realize that if you are not a capable of keeping yourself safe please talk to someone please go to the hospital something alike if you go or when you get out or if you are ready to start your road to recovery there's a lot of things I would recommend doing um, first off I think if you are self-harming and as much as you don't want to do that but you are ready to stop and it's very very difficult to do it on your own you may think you can but it becomes an addiction and it's awful I think you need to tell someone whether a friend or a parent or a guardian or a sibling and you need to ask them to get rid of the tools you've used. And I'm saying that because if you get rid of them, you know where they are and you might, within an hour even, go back and find them and get them, whether it's in the garbage or anything like that. And if you're feeling suicidal but you are ready to take away those risks, ask the parent, sibling, guardian, friend, to get rid of and remove everything that you could use whether that be pills or ropes or belts or blades or anything like that please ask them to remove it because you might think you're able to do this on your own but you don't want to take the risk of falling back into the pit and then having everything that you used before be right there and it's hard it's really hard I have seen a therapist, two therapists, for about three years now, and I go to DBT therapy, which is Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, and it helps wonders. What my therapist has me do is keep track of a diary card, which tell, like, keeps me track of my emotions, the intensity of those emotions, if I used any skills that I've been taught, if I have self-harmed, attempted suicide, if I haven't, what the rating for wanting to do that was, if I've had risky sex, if I have done drugs and alcohol, it just keeps track of all that and I give it to her at the end of the week so she can look through it. Hey guys, my camera cut off my recording right there. There will definitely be a second installment to this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave your stories, comments, anything down below or like even anonymously tell me them on Tumblr if you want. But I just wanted to let you know, guys know that I appreciate you and that I will definitely be doing this again. So, thanks for having coffee with me.